Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. I'm Jeff Allison and thank you for watching. Welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. Today I'm messing around with a new finger brake that I picked up at SEMA 2018 and it's been here well, so almost two months now. Um, uh, it's a Woodward Fab model. It was their floor model at the show. So um, for that reason, what I got was the brake. I didn't get any of the tools. I didn't get any of the uh, uh, equipment that may or may not come with them. I don't even know. So it was the brake and the stand and uh, you know, it's not that big a deal. I got a really good price with it. Um, I am planning to try and call Woodward and see if there's some kind of toolkit or something that came with accessory kit, I guess, that would have come with it. See if I can't uh, buy that or talk them out of it, maybe. Um, but basically today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this to make a shelf for the lower stand, for on the stand here, just so we have some place to throw couple tools or some sheet metal scraps or whatever. I'm also thinking about uh, maybe putting a sheet metal rack on the back of the stand um, just because I usually when I order a sheet of a full sheet of uh, sheet metal I don't typically have them leave it in 4x8 or 4x9 fashion. I usually have them shear it down. Um, if I'm buying a full sheet a lot of times I need a particular size and so I have them go ahead and shear that down for me. And then I have whatever's left sheared down into two by four pieces to make them more manageable. And, and uh, my shears, everything, you know, as far as equipment, biggest thing I can handle is four feet anyway. So um, having an eight by four sheet of uh, sheet metal laying, or a, excuse me, a four foot by eight foot sheet of sheet metal laying around is really just kind of excessive. So what we've got here is the Woodward Fab Boss uh, 16, which uh, when I went and read this, Talking to the guys, I mean, it's, it's made to bend 16 gauge sheet metal um, and do it in a box so all these fingers can be removed and interchanged. They're in one inch increments. So that's supposed to allow you to get pretty good size. I mean, obviously you could do something, um, there's a little extra room on each side, but realistically you're gonna bend something with an inside shape of, of less than maybe 42 inches or something, 44 inches. Um, it can do six inches depth, so there's that much clearance here. And it'll do up to, I think it's 120 or 130 degrees of bend. Um, it's got a big 50, I think they said this is a 50 pound counterweight. So we'll extend this out um, if we start bending. Uh, this is, the, the metal we're using today, I, I can't remember if it's 18 or 20 gauge. So. Probably don't have to worry about that, but if we want it, we can push that out and get a little extra help from it. I'm thinking that if we put a shelf down here and go ahead and put four sides on it so we can throw some small pieces of sheet metal in there. Um, when I find, I'll, I'll pick up a couple Allen wrenches that, are, that I'll leave with this tool and I'll just leave those laying in the tray or drill holes up in this bar and set them in something. But basically, I just want a little bit of storage on here. There's this whole rack, and I did put it on the wheels. Um, mostly that's to move it from this shop down to the other shop when I'm ready. And uh, then eventually it'll probably end up in one location and stay there. But right now it's kind of convenient to have it on wheels. I've, I've kind of moved it around a few times and I've played with it a little bit. So hey, it's the next day. I had a few things come up last night, so I didn't get the uh, video very far along. So anyway, we're gonna try and knock this out. And uh, what we're gonna do, like I said, is make a tray. Uh, we're starting with a 24 by 48 inch piece of sheet metal. And we're gonna fold up two inch sides on it. And I'm gonna show you a couple different ways of folding up the sides as well. So um, kind of reposition the cameras here so you can see the sheet metal. We'll kind of lay it out. And then we'll talk about the uh, methods we're gonna use for welding it and, uh, and boxing, box folding it, uh, bending the sheet metal. So let's get that done. Like I said before, we're starting with a 48 inch by 24 inch piece of sheet metal. And what I'm gonna do is just bend up two inch sides all the way around. 
pretty simple. Um, for those of you with a carpenter square, um, this one, in fact, and most that I've ever owned at least, this uh, arm is two inches wide, so you can pull your your markings off of that without having to do a whole lot of measurements, just flush up the outside. Um, that works pretty well on the end pieces here. The others we might need a little longer straight edge. I'm looking for a level for it. I thought it was laying out here, it's six feet long. I don't know where it is, but it's not out here. So we're just gonna use this piece again. I'll just have to do it twice. And really it's not even uh, all that critical to mark all the whole way across. It's more so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, because once I put it in the brake, if I just had a point on each end that would give me a, a, the ability to make a straight line with it. So one of our goals in this little project is to show you guys a couple different ways to fold this uh, these corners. So I'm going to draw it out on this piece of paper so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. As you can imagine, as we try to fold this up or fold this in, we're going to end up with this square that's in the way. Now, one of the things we can do, once we get it all laid out, is we can come in, put that piece of metal out, or paper, and then when we fold it, it's going to So assuming you fold it essentially perfectly, um, when you finish, you're going to have both sides are up and even, and all you would do is come back in and then make or TIG this corner up. You could do it from the inside or the outside. The outside would at least give you, let me put it this way, if you welded, if you did a weld on the inside, you're going to get some structural strength and it's going to leave a very crisp edge out here, but you're going to see the, the uh, uh, opening, the, the crease, if you will. Um, if you welded it on the outside, you're probably going to kind of get a rounded off weld, and then you could try and grind it to a point again. The other option would be, and it doesn't matter which side you pick, you just need to be... Um, you need to do at least the, the sides that are adjacent um, the same. You can take, put your, put it in your, your brake, and all I've done is cut one side, but bend them all up, and then when you bend this side, can tuck that piece in or on the outside. I think it would look better on the inside from the other. But now then all you have to do is weld over here or spot weld it or you could tack weld it here and tack weld it over here. Um, it gives you a couple more places and you don't have to put quite as much heat into that sheet metal. So my plan is to uh, bend them with the fold or with the uh, tab on them and then uh, we'll weld them together. So, marked this out, and I only marked a couple of them where I went past. So, 
Let me go ahead and finish that marking. There you go. So what we're going to do is cut it here, cut it there, and all four sides. And then when we put it in the break, we'll break it across the whole piece here. And then we'll put it in the other way with a couple fingers missing on the outside so that we can bend that up. Let's uh, reposition the camera one more time and we'll get it on the brake. That might be another little project for this, is to add a little tray back here behind all this. Um, so right now we're about an eighth of an inch off that line. We're going to tap that in just a little bit. We were going to adjust this weight out to help. All right, now let's see how it looks. Right, that makes it quite a bit easier. Right. You got to account for some spring back. I'm just under the degree point. That looks pretty good to me. Good, we'll put this 90 degrees. Maybe just a little more. That looks pretty close. Now, because these teeth are removable, and because it's six inches deep, we're going to be able to bring the lens. What we've got to do first though is get ourselves the inside dimension, get that much of the of the block, and it's not so critical that you have, you know, you can have gaps between the teeth. What you really don't want though is to not have the corners of these right on the inside corners of your bin. So let me get the an Allen wrench for these and we'll measure that out and put it in. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of work here in the middle. Of these teeth out and see now that's why I want the tray is so I can put the teeth on and our inside dimension should be about 20 inches and it's right on 20 so we're going to come over find us about a 20 inch point which would be the end of that tooth right there
and that gives us the room to put, to uh, place that box in. And actually, we're about 20 and an eighth, so there's probably some little gaps in between these. So we're going to take maybe this bigger one out. hair under 20 which should let actually we probably need to go maybe not quite an eighth maybe 330 seconds under because we want those two flanges to slide to the inside and we're going to stick this tooth back in huge gap in one place. We're just going to slide all of them around just a little bit, eat up. Again, I don't know that that's 100% necessary, but it seems to me the less air in one area that doesn't have a tooth on it to help it bend, the more likely we are to get a nice crisp Just about right. There's just a little gap inside there. Right on the line, so we can knock this down. This one down. Now as we fold this up, we want to make sure those stay inside, but not so far that they actually end up hitting the tooth. We're locked down. These are inside. Roll that up, make sure they stay inside. There we, go. we now have our tray. The only thing you can have is now we have a little flex in here, which you could go in and you could bead roll some ribs in it or lengthwise or whatever, and that would stiffen it up. But because it's going to be bolted to this rack on here, and the bottom underneath will be have these eighth inch by three inch pieces of flat bar welded in in a couple places. I'm not, not hugely worried about it. So all we really need to do is bring the corners the rest of the way in and clamp them and then we can weld these up. We don't need a whole lot of weld there, just enough to things together.
clean those up real quick with a scotch Bright and Tech D. thing is to add those support bars underneath there for the rack. So I'm hoping you can see my black marks. I marked the center and then the outside edge and the outside edge. And uh, the tray is 44 inches long, so I just marked um, this one in the center. Okay, guys, so what I did was just use a square and lay out the center here, put that one in, and then I laid out the outside edge on both of these coming in about an inch from where the box would sit. That should be more than enough support for what we're doing. And we'll uh, clean a little bit of powder coating off and then put our piece. Clean these welds up real quick. Not entirely sure what color blue that is, although it looks, you know, it's lighter than Ford blue, but something similar. Then we're just going to use a couple of self drilling screws to hold it in. Number eight. Oh, shoot. Let's throw a couple clamps on here. Just 
There you have it. We have a tray some parts. As we take them off, they're not just ended up laying on the ground. Pieces aren't getting lost. Um, these will go back in my set, but I'll pick up some Allen wrenches to go with this piece of equipment. And like I said, we may just drill holes here to put the Allen wrenches in, but just gives us something to do, or some place to put our stuff. And it gave us something to do in that we tested out the, uh, the brake. Um, it makes nice bends. We were able to, to bend 48 inches of material. This, like I said, is, uh, I'm thinking it's 18 gauge after messing with it here for a little bit, but either 18 or 20, doesn't really matter. And then on this brake, and there's adjustments on both sides, but we have some different controls here. You saw us move the weight around. Um, you can actually take part of this fence off to get a tighter bend, but I um, can't remember, there was something in the instructions about limiting your material without this to, if it's normally 16 gauge, then you would limit to like 20 gauge or something without this, this extension on here. Um, but you can adjust depths here to make a little bit softer bend. Um, you would just pull these teeth back away from the actual bending edge, this actual point in here so you didn't get it quite as tight a bend. Um, this of course just adjusts the, uh, how much tension's on there. And you might want to do that if you were trying to bend um, some thicker aluminum or something, which the machine is capable of doing. There's also some other tricks that we'll play with in the future that don't have anything to do with, with the functions of this actual machine, or, uh, um, but are some other th cool things that we can do with a bender this size. So. So everybody, that's the Woodward Fab Boss 16 finger joint bender, finger bender. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some stuff with it. I've already used it to make our first little project and it uh, came out really nice. It's gonna be really usable for us in the future. So um, thanks for watching and we'll be back on the next week or two with some cars and back onto some normal stuff. Although I've got some other kind of different things like this that I'm going to show you, some different tools that we're using. And anytime you see it in the background or something, or you see, it, see me using it when we're making up a floor pan or what have you, um, you can always go, oh yeah, I remember when we, we talked about that and we know what we're using it for and, and some of the features that it's got. So we'll, we'll actually touch on some more of them as we get into some other projects. But that was like, a, that was, that pan there was a nice project to start with because it used the actual function of why you have the removable teeth to make it. So, um, thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching Allison Customs Project Car TV. Like us on Facebook and check us out at AllisonCustomsOnline.com.